So at this time, we would like to show and prove, according to the Apocrypha, which is the Bible, how the ten tribes came over to the Americas, known as the New World. And these ten tribes were referred to as what you call Native American Indians, the Indians in Central America, throughout the Caribbean and South America. Now, this is the book of Second Ezra, the 13th chapter and the 40th verse. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in so, the time of Hosea the king. So this Hosea was the king of Israel during that time when the nation of Israel was split into two, known as the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. Now at this time, Shalmaneser, the king of Assyria, took the uh, ten tribes out of Israel and took them into his country, which is up in Assyria. Read on. Whom, Sh whom Salomonasa, the king of Assyria, led away captive. So they went into slavery under the Assyrians. Read on. And he carried them over the waters, and so they came into another land. So he took them over the waters into the land of Assyria. So he took them from the land of Israel to his land, Assyria, as slaves. Read on. Right. And that's also made mention of in the book of Kings, Second chapter Kings, 17. Second Kings, the 17th chapter. Right. Verse 41. But they took this counsel among themselves. So who took this counsel? The ten tribes, including the tribe of Dan, who was also absorbed into the rest of the tribes of Israel. They took this counsel among themselves. Read on. That they would leave the multitude of the nations and go forth into a further country. So they said, listen, Israel, our brothers, we're going to leave this part of the world where these heathens, these nations are occupying, and we're going to go fall into another country. Read on. Where never mankind dwelt. At that time, when they made this statement, no other nation of people were dwelling in what they call the New World, which is called the Americas. It was unoccupied. Read on. Verse 42. That they might there keep their statutes, which they never kept in their own land. So they say, if we leave this part of this world and go into another world, another part of the, of, of the earth, we might keep our laws and statutes, which we never did kept. Read on. And they entered into Euphrates. Now this is going to knock out that big, blatant lie that have been taught in the school system that the Indians came from the Bering Strait. That's what it says. It said they entered into the Euphrates. Where is the Euphrates? It's, up, it's above Iraq in the Middle East. They came to the Persian Gulf because the Euphrates extend all the way down to the Persian Gulf. Read on. By the narrow passages of the river. By the narrow passages of the river through the Euphrates and then came all the way down to the, uh, the Persian Gulf. Read on. For the Most High then showed signs for them. The Most High showed the signs in the heaven. So they navigated by the stars. And who was doing this? The tribe of Issachar, the so-called Aztecs, which you call the Mexicans. Read on. And held still the flood till they were passed over. So the Most High held still the rough seas until they were passed through. Read on. For through that country there was a great way to go. For through that country was a great way, a long way to go. Coming from all the way from all the, from the, uh, the Persian Gulf, coming on all the way down to uh, Africa, the, uh, the coast of Africa, the tip of Africa. It was a long way to go. Read on. Namely, of a year and a half. And it took them a year and a half. Why? Because they had to make stops to get what? Water and maybe food. So it took them a year and a half to get from the east all the way to the west, which is known as the Americas, the New World. Read on. And the same region is called Osiris. And that same region is called Asaph, meaning another land, which is known as America. That's the land they came to, the Americas. Read on. No, sir. That's it. So that was it, showing you how the tribes came over to the New World. It took them a year and a half to get from the east to the west. So that knocks out the lie that they came from the Bering Strait. Right. So now let's go to Genesis chapter 49, and we're at verse 20, proving Asher. Asher. So Asher represents the Indians from Colombia all the way down to Uruguay. And we're also dealing with the tribe of Neftali, which also represents the Indians of Argentina and Chile. Out of Asher, his bread shall be fat. So the Most High said, out of Asher, his bread shall be fat. What is his bread? His resources that's in the land of, of South America. Read on. And he shall yield royal dainties. And they shall yield royal dainties. The royal dainties is the fabulous uh, costumes and foods, certain uh, chocolate uh, dainties that they use, they eat. And also, too, he's speaking about what they have every year in Brazil, what they call the carnival. So now let's go to Deuteronomy 33 to finish on Asher. Deuteronomy 33 and verse 24. And of Asher, he said, let Asher be blessed with children. So Asher is blessed with children. All South America, in Brazil, they're blessed with abundance of a lot of children. 
That's why at one time they were killing the uh, children off in Brazil. They had certain hit squads uh, killing the young children because the population of the children was growing so much in poverty. Read on. Let him be acceptable to his brethren. So when it says let him be acceptable to his brethren, it's speaking about the rest of his tribes that were scattered down to the Amazon. Right. That became like cannibals. Twenty-four, and of Asher he said, "Let Asher be blessed with children." So Asher is blessed with children. All South America in Brazil, they are blessed with abundance of a lot of children. That's why at one time they were killing the uh, children off in Brazil. They had certain hit squads uh, killing the young children because the population of the children was growing so much in poverty. Read on. Let him be acceptable to his brethren. So when it says let him be acceptable to his brethren, it's speaking about the rest of his tribes that were scattered down to the Amazon. Right. That became like cannibals, outcasts. Read on. And let him dip his foot in oil. Now, when it says let him dip his foot in oil, when you look on the map, Venezuela is right above Brazil. And Venezuela is the largest producing South American country that produces oil. So that's what it says let him dip his foot in oil. Read on. Thy shoes shall be iron and brass. It said, Thy shoes shall be iron and brass. What's under your shoes? The sword, your foot. So uh, in that country, South America is filled with a lot of natural resources as well. Uh, uh, silver, uh, gold, uh, copper, and all, aluminum, all sorts of natural resources that's needed for uh, your building of materials and so forth. Read on. And as thy days, so shall thy strength be. And, and so as the days are, so are the strength. They constantly multiply and increase it. So South America is a rich country in resources. Right. So now let's go to Genesis 49 once again in verse 21 to prove Naphtali. So Naphtali represents the Indians of Argentina and Chile, known as the Araucan Indians, that lives in the southern part of, of South America. Read on. Naphtali is a hind let loose. So a hind let loose is like, it's like a, a, what you call like a horse, or a, it's like a wild goat. Right. They're like nomads. They wander. Right. Okay. So they call them the gauchos. But not, I'm not talking about the Spanish that went over there and classified themselves as gauchos. I'm talking about the real Indians of that area. Read on. Because he, down in, in, uh, in Argentina and Chile, you have a lot of so-called Spaniards in that area. I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about the true inhabitants of that country. Read on. He giveth, descent. He, Read on. He giveth goodly words. So the people of Argentina give goodly words because when you look up the word, uh, the capital of Argentina is what? It's Buenos Aires. In Spanish, mean it means good air, pleasant. So the, the, the Indians of that country were pleasant people until the Spaniards came and robbed and destroyed them. Right. So Read now on. let's go to Deuteronomy 33 and 23. It says, And of Naphtali he said, O Naphtali, satisfied with favor. And they're satisfied with favor. They're pleasant people. The land is full with what? With the blessings of grapes, wine, precious wine that comes from Argentina and Chile. Read on. And full with the blessing of the Lord. Possess thou the west and the south. Now, when you look on the map, Chile possesses the, the farthest uh, west, western point in South America. Possess thou the west and the south. And Argentina possesses the most southern point in South America. When you look on the map, Chile and Argentina. Chile is the west, and Argentina is the most southern point of South America. Right. Possess thou the west and the south. Also, because this is in the western hemisphere. Right. Okay, possess thou the west and the south, as he brought out, the southernmost part is uh, Argentina. Argentina. And Chile is to the west. Right. And also, too, when he said uh, the most I blessed him, Argentina possessed a large amount of beef, the cattle industry in Argentina. Okay, so now we're going back to Genesis 49, and we're going to deal with Joseph. Right. Okay, which became Ephraim. You can expound on that. Now we're going to deal with the tribe of Joseph, which represents also the tribe of Ephraim and Manasseh. And to show you that scripture real quickly, go to Numbers 132. It says, of the children of Joseph, namely of the children of Ephraim by their generations. So jo uh, Ephraim took the posterity of his father Joseph, but the name was still there. So let's read Genesis 49. Right, real quick. In Genesis 48, when a blessing was to come on Joseph, he asked uh, his father to give it to his son, Joseph I mean, Ephraim and Manasseh. So Ephraim was the younger boy, Manasseh was the older. You can read the story on your own. So the greater blessing was put on Ephraim. It tells you that um, Jacob crossed his hands like so, 
and put his right hand on the younger boy and his left hand on the older boy and put the blessing on him. So read Genesis 48 to get the history behind that. So now, we're going to speed up because we're running short of time. So we're in Genesis 49 and 22. Joseph is a fruitful bow. So it said Joseph is a fruitful bow, meaning his prosperity, Ephraim is fruitful. They have a lot of children, their offspring. Read on. Even a fruitful bow by a well. So it's showing you even when you plant a bow by a well, it becomes very fruitful. It, it produces a lot of fruits. Anything that's planted next to a, uh, rivers of water or a well, it becomes very pr uh, productive. Read on. Whose branches run over the wall. Now it says whose branches run over the wall. When the uh, Puerto Ricans was over here in the islands and the Spaniards came and conquered them, their daughters married into the, fa into the family of the Spaniards. So that's when it says their branches ran over the wall. They went out of their family uh, line and went over into the Spaniards. Let's put it in the scripture in uh, Hosea, the fourth chapter and the 17th verse. Because it's going to explain to you about Ephraim, how Eph what Ephraim did and what happened to Ephraim when the Spaniards came and conquered the island of Puerto Rico. Hosea, the fourth chapter and the 17th verse, explains what happened to Ephraim. Uh, let me go to Hosea chapter 7 and right. verse 8. Right, that's right. It says, Ephraim, he hath mixed himself among the people. Right, some of them, not all of them. Some of them have mixed themselves amongst the people, which were the Spaniards. Read on. Ephraim is a cake not turned. So it says, Ephraim is like a cake not turned. Now, let me give you an example of a cake. When you have a cake that's one part is well done, and when you turn the other side over, it's not fully done. It's like a yellowish color. So that's what it's, it's referring to Ephraim. It's like a cake not done. He's like a light complexion. Light. Not real dark anymore. He's light. Read on. There's more to that? No, that was it. Okay. Okay, so now let's go. Let me go back to that. It says, Joseph is a fruitful bowl, even a fruitful bowl by a well, whose branches run over the wall. I wanted to say something right. concerning that over the wall. In Puerto Rico, they have a giant wall that's called El Moro right. that the Spanish built to keep the other invading whites out, okay? So now that, that's exactly what the scripture is talking about, but it lets you know that the women of Puerto Rico, the Boricua Indians, they went over that wall and started dealing with the Spaniard whites, okay? And then they had children, and those children went back and dealt with the true Boricuas, okay, and had offspring. That brought about the change in the complexion of their skin. Right. Okay, so I'll read on. The archers have sorely grieved him. And the archers that sorely grieved the Puerto Rican Indians, the Taino and the Boricua and so forth, was the Spaniards. They hated them. They butchered and massacred them. Read on. And shot at him and hated him. And they shot at them with the, with the guns. And they hated the so-called Puerto Ricans. So this was one example of the hatred that was displayed towards the Boricua and the Taino Indians by the Spaniards. So now, when you read for it in, in Genesis 49, it gives a history of Joseph. So from there, we're going to go to uh, Deuteronomy, the 33rd chapter, and the 13th verse. And of Joseph, he said, Blessed, blessed of the Lord be his, his land, excuse me, for the precious things of heaven. So now the Most High is telling you about the land of Ephraim, the Puerto Ricans, for the blessing of the land, and for the precious things of heaven, the sun, the moon, the good climate, the temperature, and all the beautiful fruits and so forth that grows in the island. Read on. For the dew and for the deep that couches beneath. And the dew, in the morning you see the dew upon the grass. The dew is what help your uh, crops to grow good in the morning too. Read on. And it says, for the deep that couches beneath is the beautiful seas. The tropical uh, climate, climate and uh, the blue seas. Read on. And for the precious fruits brought forth by the sun. And the precious fruits brought forth by the sun. The pineapple, the mangoes all the Goya products, all the beautiful uh, precious fruits that grows in the island of Puerto Rico and Cuba. Read on. And for the precious things put forth by the moon. And the precious things put forth by the moon. When the moon comes out at night in Puerto Rico, this is the only unique thing that, that uh, uh, this, uh, what is called uh, a frog or coqui yeah. that lives in the island of Puerto Rico that comes out at night time. And th this frog is proven by scientists, it only lives in Puerto Rico. When you take this frog and, put, and place him any place else, it will automatically die. And this coquille at night makes a particular sound, goes right. So that's the sound that precious things put forth by the moon. And it also represents the, the uh, vegetation and the fruits. Read right. on. Verse 15. And for the chief things of the ancient mountains, and for the precious things of the lasting hills. Explain that. 
This is making reference to all the beautiful and wonderful vegetation that's on within the hills and the mountains of uh, Boriqueño. Okay, also I wanted to bring out the word Boricua, it does not mean Puerto Rico, not to get off the topic. Boricua means brave, noble lords. It's an ancient word, okay, an ancient Hebrew word, because we have already proved to you that all the so-called Indians throughout the Americans and the islands spoke Hebrew, okay? We brought it out also in uh, Lost Tribes in the Promised Lands that the, ch that the children of Joseph, the tribe of Joseph, lived on an island nearby, okay, which were the so-called Puerto Ricans and the so-called Cubans, okay? Verse 16. And also, too, in that same verse, for the chief things of the Asian mountains, coffee, or coffee grows in the mountains, too. And some of the, uh, the Indians hid some of their treasures in the mountains when the Spaniards came and conquered them. So some of the riches were still hidden in the mountains of Puerto Rico, like in the Junque, the jungle, and the area parts. Read it on. Verse 16. And for the precious things of the earth and fullness thereof. Speaking about the vegetation, the fruits, and so forth. Read on. And for the good will of him that dwelt in the bush. And the God says the, the precious things of the earth means a good soil. They have good uh, soil for planting. Read on. And for the good will of him that dwelt in the bush. And for the good, you could elaborate on that part. It's oh. the good will of him that dwelt in the bush. Meaning, this is going back in the history. When Moses went up on Mount Sinai, who dwelt in the bush? The Most High. Okay, he, the spirit of the Most High was in there. So all the blessings that Ephraim that came upon Joseph and his children, Ephraim and Manasseh, was according to the will of the Most High. Okay, let the blessing come upon the head of Joseph and upon the top of the head of him that was separated from his brethren. So all his blessing came upon Joseph, which was the father of Ephraim and Manasseh when he was separated to Egypt. Read on. His glory is like the firstling of his bullock. So his strength strength of Ephraim coming from his father Joseph read on and his horns are like the horns of unicorns and his the horn presents his power his strength that Ephraim was became a valiant warrior amongst the tribes of Israel when the nation was split reading on with them he shall push the people together to the ends of the earth so Ephraim was the one that pushed and brought the rest of the tribes over here because when the nation was split Ephraim became the chief the principal leader over the northern kingdom so Ephraim brought the tribes over here along with all the injured, the rest of the tribes of Israel. Read on. And they are the ten thousands of Ephraim, and they are the ten, and they are the thousands of Manasseh. So he's showing you about Manasseh, which are the Cuban Indians, the Saboni Indians. Right. Let me say this. When we read in the Apocrypha, in the book of Esdras, about how the tribes came over here, this is explaining to you it was the tribe of Ephraim that led them with Manasseh. Okay, they led the tribes over here. And if you notice in here, it, kept, it keeps mentioning, it says, precious fruits, precious things of the earth, and the pre precious things in the sea. The, um, the national anthem of Puerto Rico is called Precious. Okay, and that's not a coincidence. Right. <laughs> and then also in Cuba, too, Cuba produces a lot of sugar cane. It's, it produces coffee, tobacco. Cuba is a rich producing country, too. Right. One time, Cuba was a very large producing country. It produced sugar cane to all. Uh, to the Western world. Let's go to Hosea chapter 4, verse 17. Okay? It says, Ephraim is joined to idols, meaning the so called Boricua Indians, you are joined to idols, meaning you love idol worship. You got idols on your dashboards in your car, you got a shrine of idols in your house, your you tattoos. got the, 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 on your what? In your body tattoos. Tattoos on your bodies, you got that fake image of Christ everywhere. And if somebody tried to tell you about it, you you say that they're dead wrong. So the scripture said, if you can't get rid of them idols, the, us, the prophets, the teachers, we are to leave you alone. Okay, so now it's not just Ephraim that's joined the idols. When it says Ephraim, you are the top tribe because the Dominicans are on that, the Mexicans, and so on and so on. You Latino tribes. Right. Okay, and we had brought out about the, uh, the mixing of themselves and their, them being like a cake unturned. Mm -hmm. It's not just you Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, Mexicans, a lot of you also, that, that curse fell on all of you. Right. Okay. And then the Puerto Ricans have a lot of bot uh, botanical stores in the, uh, in the body or in the, in the neighborhood where you sell all these different idols where you go for these different uh, oils to put in your body to chase away evil spirit or to trap your man. Right. Candles everywhere. Yeah. Green candle for money. Right. Okay. But let's, give, let's go on to um, Tri Benjamin. Tri Tribal Benjamin. Gen Genesis 49 and uh, verse 27. Right. Benjamin shall raven as a wolf, 
So it says, Benjamin shall raven as a wolf. Now, a wolf, when a wolf raven, he, before he attacks his prey, he rolls in a wolf back and he shouts and raves <coughs> before he attacks the prey. So that's the way the so-called Jamaicans and so forth roll. They say, boy, I mean, lick shit up on you, boy. Before they attack you, they start getting up a lot of noise and let you know they're going to make the attack. And showing that Benjamin is a warring tribe. All the tri for Benjamin, which is the Jamaicans, Trinidadians, Antiguans, and all speaking the chain of Ireland and the Caribbean. That's the tribe of Benjamin. Right. Can I say this on that? Yeah. When it's when you look up the word raven, it means communicate wild. Right. Like a wolf. That people get scared when Benjamin talks. Yeah, they think they wanna wanna fight, then they just ask him for some coffee. That also that right. also goes into their music. Right. Whereas the American black is singing about love and all that. What's Benjamin singing about? Taking down the white man. Yeah. Babylon yeah. shall fall. Okay. Judgment upon Babylon. And and when you go back in the in the reggae songs like with Peter Tosh and Bunny Williams, Steve Post, the, the reggae's back in the late sixties and the seventies was all about revolution against the system. Right. Where the American blacks never sung about the revolution or destruction of the system, but the so called Western song, those militant songs. By the rivers of Babylon, uh, the judgment of Babylon, uh, and all these different revolutionary songs pertaining to the judgment of the great whore. And a lot of Rastafarians were the main one that came up with the idea of teaching about Babylon and so forth. They know they're Israelites, but they go off into the Hayes philosophy and Ethiopian right. doctrine. Let's read on. Yeah. It says, In the morning he shall devour the prey. So in the morning of our rulership, when the Most High raises us up, Benjamin is going to be vicious upon our enemies. Right. Read and on. at night he shall divide the spoil. And at night is going to rob the enemies of the spoil and take back what rightfully belongs to us. Right. The night meaning the night of the so-called so -called white man. man. The end of, of your kingship. Right. Okay. So now let's go to Deuteronomy 33 and verse 12. And of Benjamin he said, the beloved of the Lord. Because Benjamin was the youngest son of Jacob, and he became the beloved. When uh, they was down in Egypt, Joseph told his brother to send for uh, Benjamin. And Jacob was, oh, man, you're going to send my youngest son now? So now I'm already going to die now. Read on. Shall dwell in safety by him. So Benjamin dwells in safety of the Mosai, which is between the Caribbean islands, between North America and South America. That's the safety of the Mosai. Read on. And the Lord shall cover him. All the day long, and he shall dwell between his shoulders. And the shore represents the skies and the seas, the beautiful seas that's covering the West the Caribbean islands. Right. So, so now let's go back to Genesis 49 and verse 28. Right. All these are the 12 tribes of Israel. So all these are the 12 tribes of Israel. And this is it that their father spake unto them and blessed them. Everyone according to his blessing, he blessed them. So okay. he's showing you all the tribes. Remember we just read and nature knows no color about the Jews that were in Portugal and Spain was so dark that when John Bigelow came to the Caribbean Islands in Jamaica, he found them there in the Isle of Jamaica, which right. were the Benjamites, and he said they are Negroes. And a lot of Jamaicans know the history that they are Israelites, but they go into a different philosophy of Ethiopia. Right. So now let's jump back to Deuteronomy 33 and verse 29. It says, Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people, saved by the Lord? And Israel is going to be saved by the Lord. Read on. The shield of thy help. And who is the sword of thy excellency? And the most high is our sword that's going to get vengeance, vengeance against our enemies. Read on. And thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee. And all of our enemies are going to be found liars unto us. Read on. They're found liars now. now right. Right now, now this as second. As we're speaking. And thou shalt tread upon their high places. So the high place we're going to tread upon is to take away the white man's rulership under the powers of the Most High by the nation of Israel. So that concludes the 12 tribes of Israel. And we like to name the, uh, the names of the tribes. Judah, his name means the Most High praises. Benjamin means son of the right hand. Levi means joined to me. Simeon means affliction heard. Zebulon means uh, dwelling. Ephraim means fruitful. Manasseh means made to forget. Gad means true. Reuben means see as a son. Naphtali means my wrestling. Asher means happy. And Issachar means he is hired. So these are the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. In the Hebrew, it's known as Yahawada for Judah. Benjamin is Banyamian. Levi is lawyer. Simeon is Shammaiwan. Zebulon is Zabalawan. Ephraim is Aparayim, Manasseh is Manasha, Gad is Gad in Hebrew, Reuben is Raaban, Naphtali 
is Naphtalia, Asher is Asha, and Issachar is Yeshachar in the Hebrew. So these are the names of the 12 tribes of Israel, which are the so-called black Americans and the so-called Native American Indians and the Indians scattered throughout the Americas, Central and South America. So with that, this is the conclusion of 12 Tribe Productions for the House of David. We say Shalom. Shalom. Israel.